This is Dr. Richard Bernstein with session number eight of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Thanks for listening. We're going to cover the matter of stabilizing blood sugar during intensive exercise. Uh, I'll uh, first be addressing people who inject insulin because these are the people at the greatest risk for hypoglycemia. And I'll cover marathon running first because it's about as extreme as you can get. Now, if you're taking insulin, you cannot turn off what you injected. Uh, So if you're doing a marathon, which is a unique situation, I would recommend that your basal or long-acting insulin be reduced on the day of the marathon or even on the day that you're practicing, but it should never be zero. You need insulin while you're exercising, but since exercise moves glucose transporters in a manner similar to the way insulin does, uh, you'll need less insulin. Now, how clearly you're going to lower your blood sugar just by running. What are you going to do to bring it back? Well, the fastest material you have other than injecting glucose into a vein would be to drink liquid glucose. I use this material. It comes by different names depending upon where you buy it. Uh, This particular one is called glucose shot, S-H-O-T. Different uh, pharmacies may have their own trade names for the liquid glucose. The bottle contains 15 cc's or milliliters uh, and a total of 15 grams of glucose. Now, it's important that you learn how much one gram of glucose will raise your blood sugar. You could read my book, Diabetes Solution, uh, for experiments that you could make to find out just how much that would be. Uh, Typically, for a 140-pound individual, one gram will raise your blood sugar by about five milligrams per deciliter. So the entire 15 grams that's in one of these bottles would raise you 75, five times 15. But again, if you're a larger person, one gram will have less of an effect. Um, In any event, if you're doing a marathon, I would first of all recommend that you not load up on a huge amount of carbohydrate or on any carbohydrate for that matter. Uh, Some people have the notion that if they eat a lot of carbohydrate, they will uh, build up more glycogen, which can be stored in the muscles and liver. Well, this is not correct. What builds glycogen is normal blood sugars. If you're going to have a lot of carbohydrate first and high blood sugars, you're not going to build glycogen. So you might as well eat uh, the high protein, low carbohydrate meals that I recommend in my book, Diabetes Solution, and then use supplemental glucose during the run to maintain your blood sugar. Now, many diabetics are participating in marathons nowadays, and many of these marathons actually have people along the way who will measure the blood sugars of diabetics as they pass. And uh, this is a good way to do it, uh, knowing what your blood sugar is uh, and how, how much you may have dropped 
in the past 10 minutes since uh, the last blood sugar measuring station, you could anticipate the blood sugar rise and actually consume the liquid glucose while you're running in anticipation of a drop. Uh, I said blood sugar rise, I meant the blood sugar drop. Uh, so here you're running along, you're continually dropping. If you can actually, it might even be a better idea to do your practice runs and find out how much you drop during a uh, per minute or per 20 minute period during a practice run and therefore know how much liquid glucose to keep consuming over the course of the run. Now, let's take a less difficult situation. I go to the gym where I use my slow burn workout uh, uh, two days a week and each exercise lowers me by on average five milligrams per deciliter. Some exercises lower me more than that. For example, uh, today I did uh, 75 leg raises one after another and that probably lowered me uh, by about uh, 20 milligrams per deciliter, lowered me by 10 right away, and another tw 10 uh, over the next uh, half hour or so. So uh, clearly I'm going to need repeated shots of the liquid glucose. And what I do, it, my target is 83, I know that if I go below 80, I will not be able to perform as well. Uh, I won't uh, get the, the numbers. I, I write down how many seconds I was able to perform an exercise for. I won't do as well as last week if I have a low blood sugar. And I try not to go below 80. So uh, I might get my blood, try to get my blood sugar up to 90 before an exercise knowing that it's going to come down by five or more and I will repeatedly be drinking uh, uh, this liquid glucose uh, throughout the exercise. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.